When it comes to managing invasive house sparrow populations in the U.S., a question that comes up quite a bit is, what is the best trap to use? The answer to this question is going to depend on your goals. For instance, do you have a lot of house sparrows in your area and you're trying to control the population? Or do you have an active bluebird or tree swallow nest, but a house sparrow keeps coming into the area? So I'll walk you through which trap to get for these different scenarios. And it's really actually pretty easy. Unfortunately, I won't be talking about traps for purple martin housing. And that's because different configurations will have different requirements. I will try to put together a separate resource for that at another time though. Before getting started, I need to put out a few disclaimers. The first is that if you just happen to stumble on this video and are wondering why I would even talk about trapping house sparrows, it's because house sparrows are a non-native invasive species in North America. And it's not just that they're a nuisance at the feeder. They and European starlings are birds that routinely kill native birds for their nesting site. It's one of several reasons causing certain native songbird species to go on a decline. So the purpose of trapping is for wildlife conservation and native bird protection. If you want to know what to do after you trap a house sparrow, I will have a resource in the description below. Finally, the last thing I need to say is that it is really, really important that you learn safety rules when trapping. This includes identifying whether you've got a house sparrow, an invasive bird, or a native bird, which if a native bird, you'd need to release it. Spend some time looking at the resources in, description be in the description because there will be a lot and it's really all very valuable information. With that out of the way, let's talk about the best house sparrow traps out there. Usually when this question is asked, experienced bird landlords will suggest two traps, a van ert nest box trap and a repeating trap, otherwise known as an elevator trap or a repeating elevator trap. And these traps are not mutually exclusive. It's not that you would choose to buy one instead of the other because each of these traps serve different purposes. And in fact, when pairing them together, they can even be more effective. Now, when it comes to the best traps to start out with, the van ert trap is not just the best one, it is really an essential tool to have on hand when hosting bluebirds, tree swallows, chickadees, or other cavity nesting birds. The Van Ert trap is a live nest box trap, meaning that it's added to the nest box and when it springs, it doesn't kill or harm the bird that's been caught inside. Should that bird be native, it's unharmed and it can be released immediately. The reason this trap is essential when hosting cavity nesting birds is that you may run into a situation where you have a pair of bluebirds building a nest and then suddenly a house sparrow comes along or same with a tree swallow and then a house sparrow comes along. Once the house sparrow is interested in the nest box, he may aggressively take it over. And this could potentially lead to one of your bluebirds being fatally attacked. If you have a van ert trap on hand and have already set the box up to have mounting screws within, all you have to do is place the trap to catch the house sparrow. Van ert traps can be found at vanerttraps.com. Their house sparrow trap for bluebird houses will fit most standard bluebird houses and installing them is really, really, really easy. They also have a type for the Gilberts in nest box. So again, if you're hosting bluebirds or tree swallows or any other native cavity bird and are wondering what type of trap to get, at least to get started, start here. This is an absolutely essential house sparrow trap to have on hand in this situation. They're also really reasonably priced and they ship fast within the US. If you have a house sparrow problem in your area, like there's just lots of them in your area, the elevator trap, also called the repeater trap, is one of the most recommended traps to have. This is another live trap, which means that the birds aren't harmed in these situations. And it's very common to catch native birds with this trap, so you need to be able to release them immediately and definitely monitor it. The way the repeating elevator trap works is that there's some baited areas that lure the house sparrow towards a little elevator or trap door. As the house sparrow progresses and lands on the trap door area, he's lowered down. His weight holds him in the elevator, so his only option is to go through this little gate into the holding area, but it gets better than that. House sparrows are really social colony birds and having one bird trap tends to attract more. So this is an excellent trap to have if you have lots of house sparrows in your area and you're wanting to reduce that population for conservation reasons. It's also great to have on hand if you're hosting cavity birds in general, but again, your first must have is that Van Ert trap. So I mentioned that these traps start to work really well 
when used together. And what I mean by that is that the challenge with the elevator trap, especially during the nesting season, is that it can be hard to catch a house sparrow if you don't have a house sparrow. Food can help, but around nesting time, it just isn't enough usually, not unless you have hordes and hordes of them in your area already. But during the nest season, nesting season, if you have a Van Ert trap, you can catch one, put that one in the repeater trap with food and water, and then more house sparrows, especially like his mate, may come around and get trapped. Repeating traps can be bought at sparrowtraps.net. This is a reputable site that many recommend using. It's also where I got mine. You can also make them. There's a good tutorial out there, but really after supplies and time, it's probably going to be more convenient just to buy it. If you're in a hurry or love woodworking, then those situations are where I would say go ahead and make it. Finally, to close, I just cannot stress enough about safe trapping tactics like careful monitoring and properly identifying whether you've actually caught a house sparrow or a native bird. Both of these traps can accidentally catch native birds and even other curious animals, so you cannot leave them unattended or unmonitored. So just be careful. I hope this helped clear it up for you, or maybe you found this helpful for other people you've been guiding and want to pass it along. I wish you the best of luck when it comes to trapping, and thank you for taking these steps to help protect our native songbirds.